is Paper Tiger, Artist's Call Show, um, with no countdown, but 10 seconds, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The following Paper Tiger television production is dedicated to Artist's Call Against U.S. Intervention in Central America. Lucy Lepard, art historian and journalist, explains what Artist's Call is, an event which took place in January 1984 in New York City. Artist's Call is a nationwide mobilization of artists against U.S. intervention in Central America. Why is it happening now? Because something's got to happen now. Why artists? <laughs> because every single community really has to learn to speak up, and it's always easier to organize within your own community. I think a lot of people feel like if it's just a great big general thing, they can kind of get out of it somewhere or another. But if, if it begins in your own community and the people you know are involved with it, whether it's doctors, nurses, artists, whatever, then you are more likely to do something. Can artists make a difference? Absolutely. <laughs> what a leading question. How? Well, how? Well, the power of the imagination is quite something. And even when people don't acknowledge it, it's there. And, uh, and also just artists as plain citizens, as responsible people, can do every bit as much as the next person can. So what's going on here? Easy question. This is one of eight nights of a performance festival. Uh, some 75 performance artists alone. Actually, all together, there are literally several, probably five or 6,000 artists all the way across the United States and Canada involved in this. And 1,100 artists have signed a poster alone in New York. There are 31 galleries, 31 exhibitions, eight performance nights, endless poetry readings, music events, film, video. Da -da -dum. Nobody ever wants to hear the whole list, but it's very impressive. It's the largest thing of this kind that's ever been done. Right. And do you think that this will have, what kind of effect do you think this will have? Well, I think for one of the effects it'll have is on artists themselves. I think it, you know, it starts at the heart of it, which is the artists. People thinking about what they can do, thinking about the issues, even if they never do another piece on Central America, it's been a kind of, some, a, new, a new kind of consciousness raising experience. And the same thing for the audience, same thing for everybody who goes to any of the events and so forth. And, it, and it, it's a ripple effect like all art is, I think. It starts with the person who makes it and the audiences get broader and broader. Library of the future. she dreamed about a country where there were no more trains and no more planes and no more buses. Where the people had forgotten the way to the river and they only went as far as they could walk and they couldn't tell you how to get anywhere. Without knowing where she was heading, she opened a cellar door and walk through dark underground passageways and climb garden walls and found herself wandering in sordid city streets, sensing danger everywhere. Standing on a street corner lit by neon, 
she smelled a change in the air. The sky opened, and she followed the brilliant bird that appeared in the twilight to the sea. As the wind tipped over the peninsula, she thought, <coughs> how picturesque and Mexican the landscape looks. When they landed, she remarked on how picturesque and Mexican the people look. For several days, she enjoyed how picturesque and Mexican Mexico is. <laughs> Then one day, in a Mexican restaurant, she ordered shrimp, thinking, mmm, good Louisiana shrimp. But when she tasted it, it tasted Mexican. <laughs> she was so affected, she had to stay in bed the next day. From beneath the canopy of white mosquito netting, she watched the rats perched on the partition that separated the rooms. One of them had eaten through their knapsack to get to the cheese inside. Everything was fine, she thought, until that shrimp. Now things are different. Something's changed. When he returned that afternoon, he found her on the edge of the bed with the camera, waiting for a rat. <laughs> I thought if I could get a picture of one, I could turn this experience into an interesting story. But I was afraid the flash might frighten the rat, <laughs> throwing it off balance onto the netting, which possibly Failing under the weight might fall onto me. I shot too soon. The rat got away. When she could get out of bed, they walked to the ruins. As he told her about the Indian gods, she noticed snakes sunning themselves everywhere. Iguanas watched her from the stones. When the long lizards ran toward her, she ran away. Walking in the jungle, they startled a flock of parrots, which screeched into the sky, turning it colors. She'd never seen so many brilliant birds together and free. <coughs> In America, we have pets, she thought. But here, the animals are all wild. On the bus in Guatemala, she asked him about those blue beads the Indian women wore. <laughs> They're like wedding bands, he said. They're precious to these women. Hearing this, an American woman seated behind them walked up to the nearest Indian woman and tried to buy her beads. She added dollar to dollar until she held a green fan of bills. But the Indian woman didn't sell her beads. They got off at the next stop, deciding to continue their journey on foot. They kept walking for a long time until they came to a river. They saw a fisherman walk across the water, so they knew this river could be walked across. With 40 pounds on their backs, they entered the river. But with each step, the ground beneath their feet washed away. The current gnawed at their ankles and feet. If they hesitated, if they stopped for a minute, they'd be swept out to sea or sucked underground into the riverbed. Faster, Lisa. Come on. Walk. Come on, Lisa. And the current was coming at them. I'm here. Keep walking. And the water was walking around them. I am. Come on, walk. Come on, Lisa. You can do it. And they kept going. I can. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, one more step. 
the other side. Breathless, exhausted, they fell to the bank and lay there without saying a word. Then a man appeared and said to them, you can't stay here. It isn't safe. There are wild animals here. Come into my preserve and you can hang your hammock between two trees and you'll be safe for the night. So they accepted his hospitality. They hung the hammock between his trees and they stayed for the night within his fence and were safe. That night, she dreamed about a country where there were no more planes and no more trains and no more buses, where the people had forgotten the way to the river and they only went as far as they could walk and they couldn't tell you how to get anywhere. The next day, they waited by the roadside until a bus came. They took the bus to the village they tried walking to. And tonight we learned how to make the recipe for Ocean of the Future. Nice. Okay, first, you need 16 million. Oh, merde. Shit, that means shit. Okay, Viking, Viking, nice. Okay, first, you need 16 and a an half million cup of water. Like this, huh? Nice, canal plastic, nice. Okay. Next to you, you need a basin, huh? What's the basin doing here? I don't know. Okay, and for that, ocean-like basin, like that. Next to aquatic vegetation, huh? Très important, like this, the moss, the seagrass, stuff like that, the seaweed. Also, the loofah meat, huh? Very nice, the loofah meat. Okay, next to you must have the fish and sea mammal. Uh, like the dauphin, like this, uh, the stingray, I love that. The lobster, uh, I don't know the word in English for this. Uh, and other words like that. Okay, next to uh, must add a peu de oil, huh? very important. Just spill like that, okay? Doucement, huh? doucement, doucement. Okay, now it's finished for that. So you need some heavy metal, huh? uh, trace metal, like mercury or lead. Tonight I have lead, nice. Okay, very important. Human sewage, huh? I like like this, it's very nice, okay? Like that? No, please, it's packagé, you don't have to touch, huh? Okay, like that? And a peu de blood some, a jet some, like that? Et très sympa, and ladies and gentlemen, voilà, ocean of the future. Nice! Webster's next normal, an adjective of, relating to, or characterized by average intelligence or development. As, as a Nicaraguan artist demanding shows and established, established institutions. institutions. Now, we all know only bourgeois get out anyway, but we want to know more. She, she wants, wants to know, to know why, why these revolutionaries, revolutionaries who she assumes that. to have at least average intelligence, don't, don't see the contradictions in terms. She wants to know why they want into yeah. normal North, North America's capitalist establishment systems, systems while they, they demand support for their wildly alternative, alternative scene and, and out with U.S. intervention. intervention. And she, she certainly holds these revolutionaries dear, dear knows, knows they manifest more than average gut development. But she wants to know why this Nicaraguan revolution, so even full of women, turns tail and back on police intervention of gays gathering in parks and quietly in the back of restaurants. She wants to know why they don't demand of Americans, Americans queer acceptance as much as they demand acceptance of their art. And there's more Webster queer. The transitive verb to spoil the effect or success of, disrupt, to queer one's plans. As in the wondrous Fidel, who first put queers in camps, and now only slightly better has made it legal for cops to hunt queer in Cuba. Gays getting up to two years in jail if caught. Well, his supposed Monaco brother, the Cuban Raul, is rumored to suck cop discreetly whenever he wants. 
Now, now she likes Castro, admires him greatly, and all she can uh -huh. talk is what she knows, but she wants to know more. She wants to know why Castro would spoil things with this kind of mess, certainly to jail homosexuals is to queer one's plans for a successful revolution. And she knows queers work for the revolution, but she wants to know when is the revolution going to work for queer. And there's yet another Webster definition, a spin-off from normal, the verb usual, according with usage, custom, or habit, about an ordinary practicer in the ordinary course of events, as in the two traveling self, the one that is concunct with, with the friend that is dick dick, dick traveling like their couple to be safe. safe. Crossing, Crossing the Nicaraguan border, 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 they listen for the subtropic language of these Latin tongue peoples, the language, the language of revolution, they listen for other language as well. The guarded thousand year old language, the language of queer. And here it is marked by se dice nada, se hace todo, se say nothing, nothing, do all. They stop for rest along the way and chance chains. upon a friendly volunteer guard of the night, one who comprises the Nicaraguan police as they have no fuss for other. And the cut cut watches as the guard engages in ojo cantato with the dick dick. She's not entirely sure, but she thinks the guard is flirting. She thinks they're among the language of the queer. And the guard asks dick dick what he thinks of Donna Summers, raising his brows, and the dick says he doesn't care much for her. The guard persists, more pointedly asked again. The dick glances up at her and her smiles and replies, well, well, she's okay in certain situations. And the, the two, two travelers, travelers now know they have entered the, the language of queer, of queer though summer's being covert, disco gay. The guard plays footsie with the traveling dick, who nervous, finally boldly asks, isn't this dangerous, a little indiscreet? The guard smiles shyly, gives more ojo contacto, and engages the dick in more chatting. For hours, hours flirting back, back and forth, forth, and finally and the one silently signals to his guardhouse, pulls a mattress from the wall, and wordlessly requests the night. He is sweet, the traveling boy accepts. She is touched, and, and as she moves to leave them alone, sees the, the guard, guard give the sign of the cross and exclaim, Oh, oh Dios, Dios, while making appeals to the Virgin. She, she figures she better enter a prayer herself and ask him to be released from church, church grip. grip. They slip into day and at dusk begin travel again, kissing, the, kissing dog, the guard farewell. She, she thinks, thinks of the, the two dicks glory the night before and figures those, those two meetings seem to have entered into a usual practice of courting. Fell, fell to bed as part of an ordinary, ordinary course of events. Now all, all we can talk is what, what we know, and what we know, know is butt fucking and cunt sucking between consenting adults seem pretty tame and fair. Far more normal than a lot she's seen. Go down. We, we figure a normal, normal person makes for a far more integrated revolution. revolution. And she thinks about Webster's queer with its origin unknown. She thinks about normal's origin from the French word norm, meaning carpenter square. And she, she wants, wants to know who is really hip and who is really square. And all we can talk is what we know, but for the life of her, we can't figure this. Computer of the future. Juggernaut! <laughs> I 
There's oftentimes that kindnesses are not replied to with kindnesses. It's true, friend. It's true. Watch this. This morning I had this dream of down and, uh, he was down. There was this guy at my parents' said, house in Rome, Virginia. How come you're not in uniform? I want to be your friend. We're, and I was all 12. of us were hanging out there and, and I thought, we went into the kitchen. Am I supposed to be in uniform? If we're I'm having a couple of beers. Well, you've been Somebody came I in am. there those papayas said, um, you seem to like I suppose I am. Started smoking a cigarette. I didn't know who they were. I, I suppose. I said, my mother doesn't like people to smoke you cigarettes. I suppose. Suppose. Oh, I you drink. So I please don't smoke in my okay parents' house. I suppose. I'm okay. Then I walked back into the I'm living room. You're fine. There were people in the living room. I'll and there were people smoking cigarettes. I, I said, I, I know there's artwork nice on the wall for artists' calls, and we're trying like to sell this artwork, but you still can't smoke like in here. That. It's my mother's house, and she doesn't like people to smoke. And I know it's an important cause, but like, it's still not good to smoke in my hey parents' you. house. Hey <laughs> That's how I woke up this hey morning. Come on with me. Hey you. Hey you. Hey you. Come on with me. You can drink papaya. So then I found this shirt. The coconut sweet stuff too. You can talk the funny language. It don't bother the me. The shirt's from Guatemala. Don't bother you. I thought this is really. It is a very pretty shirt. And then I remembered that the guy who gave it to me used to run this store selling Guatemala products. A hippie store. Selling Guatemala products. And I thought, well, I should wear this tonight in celebration of the Mayan culture. And then I remember hearing his girlfriend tell me about how that he, when he would go down to Guatemala, he would start talking to the peasants and talking them down on their prices. They were getting, he was getting, he got this shirt for probably about 15 cents. He talked him down from a quarter, and he sold it in the West Village for about seven fifty. How about his airplane tickets? Or the bus, you have to ride the bus, you know. You know how hard it is riding the bus? fine, stop! That's okay with me. I drink the long and dirty. Nasty buses. Nasty buses. Coconut stuff, yellow rice and pork. I just have a burger or two. Then we're off to New York. Here we go. Here we go. 
Gotta play Beautiful. Here we go. Here we go. Speaking of Roanoke, Virginia, which I was already. The population of Roanoke, Virginia is the same pop population as Grenada. So I started thinking about the idea of, well, what if the U.S. invaded Roanoke, Virginia? And, and what that would be like. And I was sure that they, there's a star that's represented here on top of the mountain in Roanoke, Virginia, because the Chamber of Commerce decided that it was a good publicity move about 60 years ago to build a star on top of the mountain in, in the middle of the city that would... Then we called ourselves the Star City of the South. This was voted on by the Chamber of Commerce and decided to tear down the one theater that was in downtown, which they could have renovated instead, but instead they built the star, which turns, it's a fluorescent star 50 feet high, and it turns red when there's a fatal auto accident in the state. <laughs> During the last 26 minutes, you have witnessed portions of two weeks of benefit performances as part of artists' call against U.S. intervention in Central America. This tape included works of Paul Zaloom, Beth Lapides, Lenora Champagne, Jerry Allen, and the Smith Brothers. The program was introduced by Lucy Lepard. Paper Tiger is a mostly live public access television show. This show was made by Aaron Steinheimer, Karen Rogoff, Daniel Brooks, Diana Augusta, Charles Frankel, Shuli Chang, David Shulvin, Roger Pulitzer, and others. Didi Halleck made it all possible. No pasaran. This show is dedicated to people's struggle for freedom everywhere. It's 9 o'clock. Do you know where your country is?